All right, so we're breaking open finally the Crimson Vow Draft Booster case. So don't get too excited. This is uh, these things are going for under five hundred bucks right now on TCG Player with shipping included. You get hit with taxes, so uh, be a little over five hundred by the time it's all said and done. But with how low that price is, that just has to tell me that. These pro this product is probably a financial disaster to open. That has to be my guess if they're giving away. And yeah, we'll start with the box in the middle, top middle. Yeah, the expected open value cannot be great if they're basically giving these things away for 80 bucks. And the way the uh, uh, market value is going and shipping prices and what they're listing everything for, it seems like Wizards has done everything in their power to make sure you don't make any money opening this stuff, that you're basically breaking even. Seems like the only way to make money is to actually sell individual booster packs, which is what we started doing. So, those are on the store now. We got some booster packs listed. You are going to get hit for uh, $3.50 worth of shipping, but no matter how many packs you buy... You will not get charged more than three fifty. So when you get them, you get a tracking number uh, with that. And we're not just going to throw them in an envelope and a stamp. So, all right, now we got the box topper. These are this has been disappointing because this is certainly not a Zendikar Rising situation where you can get a box topper that's an expedition land that is worth anywhere from, uh, I mean twenty to one hundred and fifty dollars in value. Uh, a lot of the uh, box topper, my god, I'm trying not to break the pack. There we go. Seems like all the box toppers we pulled thus far have been disappointing uh, one or two dollar uh, value per card. So we'll just go ahead and open this now. Yeah, Harker's Journal. Um, I'd be surprised if that was a couple bucks. Now let's start on this side. Let's see if we get any better luck. All right, so I do believe this is our first draft booster that we're opening of this product. So this is box one of the case. We're going to see how much we get hosed here on the value. All right, Hallbreaker Horror. So that's that's a good start right there. All right, so that's, that's actually not a mythic. Wow, he's only a rare, but he's causing all kinds of aggravation right now because he has flash. He cannot be countered. He's a 7-8. And whenever you cast a spell, so that's just cast, it doesn't actually have to resolve. You get the option of returning a spell or a non-land permanent to the opponent's hand. So that is definitely overpowered. Then we got Vengeful Victim here. And as usual, we were spoiled by starting with uh, collector boxes, so... One rare per pack, unless we uh, we end up getting a foil. If the first first rare mythic you see is a foil, that usually means there'll be something else, or another rare rather, right behind it. We got inspiring idea. I think that's the same guy as the poppet stitcher. And then uh, do you can get a foil in the uh, draft boxes, but it's just an uncommon there. Blood Seed Harvester. Seems like the vampire decks are already uh, already kind of quieted down on uh, Arena. So then we got Dominating Vampire. No Mythics yet. The Investigator's Journal. I think. Oh, Harker's Journal was the. Uh, was the box topper card. And that is, uh, that is a cool treasure token. I haven't really gotten a chance to look at any of the uh, commons or uncommons in this set, but it doesn't seem like we got any, uh, any better. Usually with commons and uncommons, what you're looking for is what's good removal. Oh, Evolving Wilds is back. I think I noticed that last time. Usually looking for a uh, good removal or counter. Another Hallbreaker Horror. Okay, so he's not the, uh, this isn't the showcase one, but that is not a bad start if we're getting two of them. For all I know, that could be worth only a couple bucks if it's not a uh, showcase version. 
But yeah, it seems like with the commons and uncommons, I haven't seen any really good counter spells or removal spells that we uh, would want to kind of put to the side and find useful. So then we got a Voldren Bloodcaster. And a red human token. That's rare. Usually they're white. Okay, then we have the uh, Geroff here, Visionary Stitcher. So I, again, I don't know if that's the same guy or we just kind of have a legion of Stitchers here. Oh, and there's a, there's a foil rare in the back there, just an old Rustin. Looks like I see something borderless back there, but that could just be an art card or... And uh, we'll see what it is. Okay, so Shattered Sanctum. Uh, dual lands from this set have been hard to come by, I feel like, with Midnight Hunt. Okay, I'd say it was just a uh, dual face modular card. Yeah, with Midnight Hunt, we got, I mean, we did open a lot more of that in comparison thus far, but um, we got a lot more dual lands, it seems like, out of those boxes. And we got Curse of Hospitality. And this is probably one of the better uh, dual land cycles they've done in a while because if these are your third land out, they're coming out untapped. You can't fetch them because they're just a land. They aren't uh, the actual, uh, how do I explain it? Like the land type. So like this one isn't actually a, uh, a plains or a swamp. So you can't fetch them. I think there might be a few cards outside of the standard format that let you fetch just the land in general, but... Usually it has to be like a basic land or um, with the fetch land, you know, it will be like forest island. So then we got Thala there, Guardian of Thraben. That one is getting, uh, that one seeped into the mono white aggro decks on, on uh, Arena. Yeah, so non-creature non spells with him cost one more to cast, and then in mono white. Voice of the Blessed, you're not really casting any, uh, it's pretty much all creature spells. I think you got to maul the sky claves and a few other things you can kind of throw in there. And Sundown Pass, a so second dual land. Those seem to be uh, the two most common ones we're getting. All right, Alchemist Gambit. So that is, you're going to get an extra turn with that. So right now, that comboed with All Ron's Epiphany is making those Is It Control decks a real pain in the ass because, um, yeah, if you, play, if you play it right, and depending on how long the game goes, you have an opportunity to take eight extra turns. All right, so first Mythic here. So this is Henrika. Damatha, whatever. That's probably, it's probably worth nothing, so we will not pay much attention to it. So I wonder if this is like a call dime situation where there's going to be like $60 worth of value in one of these. Then we got the overcharged uh, crap there. So biggest pull card is still the Soren Showcase Foil. Uh, cemetery there. Discreeter, Discreeter, whatever. And yeah, I haven't taken a look at, a look at these yet really, but pretty much the same uh, style as uh, we saw in Midnight Hunt. Then we got a Creepy Puppeteer. So I don't even know if we're going to end up finishing opening uh, all six of these boxes uh, on camera. Because I feel like by the time we're even close to it. Um, our Dominating Vampire there. That's the showcase. By the time we're uh, close to finishing it, I feel like uh, Kamigawa is probably going to be out by then. Neon Hunt or Neon Lights, whatever it's called. So Then we've got Hive Heart Shaman. And I guess we'll see if uh, 
Kamigawa ends up being beating out Call Dime, which was supposedly the best selling winter set of all time, but I don't really know where they get those figures from. Because if Amazon buys half a million boxes from you, it's pretty easy to say, oh yeah, uh, we sold a lot of boxes, but they're clearly just sitting at Amazon with how cheap they're selling them for now. Then we got Dollhouse of Horrors there. I thought that was a mythic too, so unless I'm, I'm probably not paying enough attention, but it's possible we've only gotten one mythic so far. But with a lot of sets, it seems like uh, the mythics usually aren't aren't worth as much. All right, so the Shattered Sanctum uh, extended art here. So I think in one of the collector boxes, we got the foil version of that. And I was saying how shitty it looked. So um, it's still still really dark on the art, but definitely looks better in non-foil. We got Ascendant Pack Leader there. Making uh, making moves in mono green aggro right now. Oh, no. I almost keep saying on standard, but I mean to say arena. Same thing, I guess. Then we got Angie there, Maid of Dishonor Showcase. And then, okay, Foil Rare, Hamlet Vanguard. And again, I don't think any of the any of these foil rares we're even getting are gonna be worth uh you know worth anything special. We got Blood Vial Purveyor. Because we were running prices on uh some of the, the one time spa we're opening we just did. And it's certainly not like that. We can get a uh have a two dollar rare shoot up to twenty or thirty in a foil version. Definitely not in uh in a standard set like this. All right, last couple of packs left. I don't even, I don't even know why I'm doing this. I feel like no one ever watches uh, these videos with these standard sets. Welcoming Vampire. So this has been a quiet box. I think our uh, our best pulls have just been, oh, oh, right there. That could be one of them. So Chandra just dressed to kill. Okay, I thought that was a showcase. That's just the standard version. Oh yeah, because the showcase is the one where she's uh she's all dressed up in the uh in the dance or the dance for the dance or the wedding, whatever it is. In that fancy dress. And got splendid Re reclamation. I'm actually hoping this is only like $60 worth of value so I don't have to waste time uh, opening the rest of this. All right, so I think uh, this, I don't know if this is normal for one of these draft boxes, but this is the third or fourth uh, foil rare we've gotten here. So we got Edgar Charmed Groom in a foil version there. Uh, and then another Edgar, that time in a showcase version, but a non-foil. Right, I should have been doing this the whole time, just getting further to the back. All right, so um, this is good. Necroduality here. Uh, this is one of the bombs from the set. So every time you go ahead and you you cast or uh, whenever a non-token zombie enters the battlefield, so basically whenever you cast something, I guess for uh, for simplicity, you're gonna get a copy of that. So that one, uh, I don't know about that version, but I know the showcase is around a twenty dollar bill. So maybe that maybe this is turning out to be all right. So all right, we'll be back. Uh, We'll get box two in at some point. We're shooting this at the same time as the collector box video. So we're going to be a mess. It'll probably be summertime by the time this shit gets uploaded. So...